But as for me, all I can say, the tongue of us is thank you, Lord, for all you've done. Do I have a witness here? For me, yes, God, yes, God. Is there anybody grateful here? Folks without homes are living in the streets. Many drug habits, some say that they just can't beat. Ooh, there are muggers and robbers. No place seems to be safe. You've been my protection. So I take the time to say thank you, Lord, for all you've done. This tiger no my nerves. Thank you, Lord, for all you've done. Because it should have been me. No food and no clothes left alone without a friend. The shunda or just another number with a tragic kid. But you didn't see fit. But you didn't see fit to let these things be but every day by your power keeping me so I want to say thank you Lord for
What a wonderful change that has come over me. Let's get the Lord. 
so that gives me uh, my pleasure and a great opportunity to give you this word that God has given us tonight. I want to go quickly to the book of Numbers, the book of Numbers, book of Numbers. There's so many people, of course, my co-laborers in the music ministry and the industry, Pastor Marvin Wine, is Pastor Donnie McClurk, and, and all the others that are here tonight. We bless God for all of them. But I feel a need tonight that there is a lot of first, second, third generation um, of daughters and sons here tonight. If that's you, let me see you wave your hand so I know who I'm talking to tonight. Amen, amen. Wave, wave it high, wave it high. Amen. So all of us have been in the church quite a long time. This is the church of God in Christ is nothing new to us. We've been around a long time. And so what God is speaking to us tonight is a word of encouragement to the body of Christ and to let you know that there are some things that God is getting ready to do for you because of your steadfastness, because of your perseverance, because of your long suffering. And we bless God for where he is getting ready to take us. I want to go to the book of Numbers, chapter 23, verse 19. Numbers chapter 23 y'all gonna pray with me y'all ain't gonna go to sleep on me are you amen i want to honor my president of the evangelist department dr campbell please bless god for my president and lady rita god bless you if you're here tonight amen sweetheart good to see you amen the book of numbers chapter 23 verse 19 i need my glasses jackie she's my adjutant tonight i need my glasses jackie I'll be seeing me in his trees if I don't get my glasses. Amen. So I want to see this word as it is tonight. The book of Numbers chapter 23 verse 19 it reads like this. God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he shall repent. Hath he said it and shall he not do it? Hath he spoken it, and shall he not make it good? I'm going to read that one more time for the sake of those that don't have their Bibles. God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he shall repent. Hath he said it, he shall not, not he do it. Hath he spoken it, but shall not he make it good? Can anybody say make it good tonight? The book of Hebrews chapter 10 verse 23 reads, Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. For he is faithful. Have I got any faithful folk in here that know a faithful God? Yeah, he is faithful, that promise. I want to really kind of pull from these two uh, verses or passages of Scripture because I feel a need of encouragement to the body of Christ tonight. What God is saying tonight is that he wants us to be encouraged for the next four or five years of ministry because of where he is about to take us. I want you to close your Bible. Grab a neighbor by the hand and look them right dead in the eye. They may owe you some money. This is a good time to get your money. It's a good time to get it. When you gonna pay me back? You haven't paid me back yet. Look at your neighbor. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, say, if God made you a promise, hold on to it. He gonna make it good. Oh, look on the other side, look on the other side and grab somebody by the hand and say, neighbor, if I don't ever see you again, I just want you to know, if God made you a promise, hold on to it. He getting ready to make it good. That's what I want to talk about tonight. If God made you a promise, is it anybody in here God made 
your promise. Let me just see your hand so I can know who I'm talking to. That, that, that there are a lot of promises that God has made in this room tonight. And as I look over this audience, yes, you being here this week is confirmation of God's manifested promises that are coming to pass. And again, might I say, people of God, that because of your faithfulness, that the only reason why you have not given up on his promise is because what he has already done and what he is already intending to do. And because he is yet faithful to his promise, he is getting ready to make some stuff good. It's evident, it's evident, and because of our presiding bishop, the theme that he carries around for the whole entire year is our great God with a great vision, and we're going to accomplish great things. Well, can I submit to you tonight that it's evident that our God is great because he's brought this great church through 103 years existing on the shoulders of great leaders with great vision and it's now we're walking into such great accomplishments and then to yet realize that God is yet faithful that's why we're still holding on just look at your neighbor and tell him say neighbor you gotta hang in here because God is getting ready to make your promise good. Believe it or not, we are at a very pivotal, prophetic, transitional point in our lives. Seasons are changing. Your status is changing. God's kingdom is advancing. And I don't know about y'all, but I'm glad that I'm a part of the kingdom of God. Well, we got to help celebrate what God is moving on us and in us. There is a spiritual shifting taking place in our church again that is affecting every area of ministry, auxiliary, and is causing a major stirring up, empowering and outpour of his spirit for the next dimension that God is taking our church. Just look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, say, if you want to go anywhere, you got to make sure you stay focused. Well, sisters and brothers, it's no longer the usual thing. It's no longer church as usual. It's no longer the norm for change is a part of God's plan, purpose and promise. It's difficult, it's uncomfortable, it's unfamiliar, but God is getting ready to stretch our church. He's getting ready to expand our church. And I realize that shifting must take place for the promise to come. For God is doing a radical thing. He's doing stuff that's out of the box. He's doing things that are crazy. He's restructuring. He's restoring. He's refurbishing. He's repairing us for the next prophetic move that is causing a fresh wind to come upon us. This fresh wind is causing us to be stimulated and motivated. Motivated for the next move. We can't get stuck right where we are just look at your neighbor and just tell him say you can't get stuck right where you are because god is getting ready to move us in areas that we never ever thought we'd be a part of well what is that it's called the promise for god said in his word that he's faithful and just to be able to allow his promise to come to pass well, God said something to me so profound uh, before I came to St. Louis and he said to tell my church that he made you some promises. Promises through your prayers. Promises through a prophecy. Promises through fathers and through mothers. Promises through grandparents and aunts and uncles promises throughout the generation from 
present to the past. But because God has made you a promise, look at your neighbor and say, he ain't forgot about you. Ah, oh, that's a wonderful thing to understand that God has not forgotten about you. You've seen other folk around you blessed, and now it's your turn. Is it anybody in here feel that God is getting ready to move on your behalf? Is it anybody in here feel that there's some things that are getting ready to come to fruition? Well, history has recorded on this Thursday the 11th day of November, this day that God remembers every person that he made a promise to this week. Tell somebody this week, this week, this week, God has already rose on your behalf. God has already rose to the occasion. God has already got some people he's about to put in place. God has already got some things that he is getting ready to give to the body of Christ. But just tell somebody, I'm just looking for the promise to come to pass. Well, I, 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 I decree and declare that every promise is sealed unto the day that he shall perform it. Isn't that a promise that he made to us that he that have begun a good work in us shall perform it unto the day of Jesus Christ? Well, I stop by to tell you that I just feel that God has got a funny way of doing things. I don't know about y'all, but I've seen God do some things that have blown my mind. I've seen God work some miracles that have blown my mind. But I stopped by to tell you tonight that God is getting ready to move this church into a whole nother direction. Uh, if that's you and you're a part of it, just look at your neighbor and say, come on, come on, come on. We got to go, we got to go, we got to go. I want you to understand that you cannot miss what God is about to do. Yes, 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 the, because the promises that he made to me, I can't die before my time. I, 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 can't, I, I can't afford to allow the enemy to abrupt my ministry. I, I can't allow the enemy to come in between me and God's relationship. I've got to see my children make it through college. I, I can't die now because I, somebody else in my family is about to get saved. I, I can't die now because I already feel the money coming. I feel investments about to break. I feel increases about to come. I feel property is about to happen. I feel opportunity is about to come. Just look at somebody and tell them, say, you got to get happy where you're going. You, you just don't understand what God is doing. Has anybody ever witnessed that God has made your promise? God has a funny way of making some stuff good. It never ceases to amaze me how God does some things. He has a funny way of making you laugh in some crazy situations. He has a funny way of blowing your mind when your back is up against the wall. He has a funny way of making the doctor scratch his head when you already know what God has told you. He has a funny way of making some things happen that is out of your control. He has a funny way of letting you see the mysterious and somehow it turns out to be the miraculous. That's just like him. Is it anybody in here know that God is really getting ready to blow your mind? You really haven't seen what God is about to do. Is it anybody understand that we are serving a God that has all, that knows all? It does not matter your status. It does not matter how rich or how poor. God knows right where you are. And the wonderful thing about God is that he never, never, never left me, nor will he forsake me. Well, just look at somebody and tell them, say, God got a funny way of doing some things. Yes, he does. He has a funny way of showing up uh, just when you need it. He has a funny way just to try to figure out why we're, why we're going in the same old circle. Because God 
is trying to get some of our attention, while you're trying to figure it out, God has already worked it out. Is, is it anybody know that God's making some stuff good right now? I just tell you to touch three people and tell them God's making it good. I don't care how strange it is. I don't care how bad it looks. God is making it good. I don't care what the condition of your body is. God is making it good. He already spoke a word tonight through Bishop and told the, every person in here be healed, be delivered, be set free. Is it anybody in here already see your miracle already coming to pass you see what God is about to do I really feel and sense in my sanctified soul that something extraordinary is about to happen uh, to those that God has made a promise to let me see your hand one more time those of y'all that God made a promise to you well if he made a promise you have to anticipate it you have to wait on it because Mm -hmm. The Bible says they, 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 they that wait on the Lord. See, I know the hour is late and I'm not crazy. Mm -hmm. but, but, but he said, He shall re -re 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 renew your strength. He said, You go mount, 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 mount up on wings. Like an eagle, you're, 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 you're gonna run and not get weary. You're gonna walk and not faint. When I wonder, are there any real bona fide believers, God chasers, movers, shakers here tonight that can truly say, God made me a promise and I'm gonna wait here until I see something happen. I can't die now. Because I got to make sure I get what God promised me. God has never told a lie. Look at your neighbor and say, I don't care what's going on in your body. God has never told a lie. I don't care what your children are doing. God ain't never told you no lie. Tell your neighbor, say, hold on. Hold on. Hold on to your promise. Because it's about to come to pass. When I stop by to tell you, when God made you a promise, I don't care what it looked like. I don't care what it sound like. I don't care what it very well may be. I'm here to tell you that God is able. I said he's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all you can ask or think look at somebody and say I don't know about you but God got me a promise and I'm just waiting on it now I can't think wait till the enemy try to sit on me I gotta get up off of the promise I gotta praise him in advance I gotta shout in doubt I gotta let you know that God is still real anybody know he's real Holler at your girl and say, I know he is. The reason why you know he is, because you're sitting there and you know where he brought you from. Song said, look where he brought me from. Brought me from danger seen and unseen. Look where he brought me from. Folk didn't like me, but I kept on moving. That's the thing about a promise. You can't worry about what folks say about you. You gotta keep on moving. The Bible says when a man weighs, please the Lord, he make a display of haters. Be at peace with you. Anybody got some enemies that's trying to do you in? Fret not yourself because of evildoers. For they soon will be cut down and withered away like the grass. Anybody got any enemies? I said, anybody got any enemies? God told me to tell you, don't let your enemies steal your joy because what God's getting ready to do is give you a sneak peek of your future. What God's getting 
getting ready to do is give you a sneak peek of the promise that he told you even before you were conceived. He's giving you a sneak peek. Johnny may be on crack, but he's giving you a sneak peek that he's on his way back. He's giving you a sneak peek. Susie may be promiscuous and in prostitution, but God has given you a sneak peek. I said he's pulling her away from that lifestyle. Tell your neighbor, I don't know if you got a son or a daughter, but I stopped by to tell you that if you can only get a sneak peek of them coming out of what the enemy had them in and rejoice in the Lord. And again, I say rejoice because he is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we can ask. He'll give you a sneak peek. Young people of your degree, even before you graduate, he'll give you a sneak peek of yourself making all the money now. He'll give you a sneak peek of you seeing yourself at the head and not the tail. He'll give you a sneak peek of you coming off your job and going on to another one. He'll give you a sneak peek of your Yourself living higher than where you are now. Just give somebody a high five and tell them don't get comfortable because the promise is getting ready to take you up and get you out out of a what from one house to another, out of a what from one car to another. Have I got anybody in here that already see some promises about the be fulfilled. Well, I stopped by to tell you the Bible says, commit your ways unto the Lord. Trust in him and he shall bring it to pass. What is it? It's anything that you're looking for in a promise. It has a reference to what you start out. God is going to finish it. It's school. What you're going for is still going. But you got to have faith. It is that job you started out with. And now they downsize it. And now God got to prepare another place. Is it anybody here that know that God is getting ready to move me in my promise? I dare you to look at somebody and say the next time you see me next time you see me next time you see me I'm going to have one of them promises that God made to me if it's my children coming back home I'm going to have a promise that God made to me what the doctor said it don't very well may have to be because God said I am Jehovah Rapha. I am your healer. I am your provider. I am your way in and your way out. I am Alpha and Omega. I am the beginning and the end. I am your corner when you're thirsty. I am your when you're hungry, tell your neighbor, say neighbor, my neighbor, ooh, neighbor, I want you to know tonight that God's getting ready to put some closure to some issues that you've been wrestling with, wrestling in the court system. He's putting an end to it. You're wrestling with your children. He's putting an end to it. Wrestling with your spouse. He's putting an end to it. Look at your neighbor and say, get ready. God's getting ready to put some closure to some stuff that the enemy have left open. Is it anybody here? See closure coming. I dare you to put your hands together and begin to say closure is coming to me. Every bad dream, closure 
just coming to me. Everything the enemy said, clothes just coming to it. I just believe that God can and he will. Anybody know he will? He'll keep you in perfect peace. If you keep your mind, stay it on him. Tell your neighbor, say, oh, neighbor, oh, neighbor. God told me to tell you that on this Thursday night, everything that the devil tried to do the first part of this year, good God Almighty, is coming to an end. You done lived all the way to November. Got one more month to go. But if I were you, I begin to praise God now because God inhabits the praises of his people. If you need him to work a miracle, I dare you to open your mouth and say, Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord, I need you to help me to hold out, to hang in. That God's getting ready to show you where he's about to take you. Anybody know you're going somewhere? I dare you to turn around right where you are and see yourself moving out of where you are. Don't look at me. If you need a miracle, turn around right where you are. The enemy, he don't want you to be blessed. The enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. But I'm so glad my praise, my praise, my praise, my praise is taking me to a whole nother level with what is the promises of God. It may be the vision pastors. It may be a dream dreamers. It may be negotiation negotiators. It may be ideas. It may be a building. It may be property. I don't know what you need, but look at your neighbor and say, I got something that I need God to do for me. If it ain't no shame in your game, I dare you to tell your neighbor, I just got a feeling by the time I get back home that everything, 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 everything is going to be all right. My money's going to be all right. My children going to be all right. My book's going to be all right. My bank account going to be all right. Tell your neighbor, say, I don't know about you, but I got a feeling in the next four days, a miracle is coming to my house. I don't hear y'all. I said, a miracle is coming to my house. Is it coming to yours? Open your mouth. Begin to prophesy. Say a miracle is coming to my house. Save my children. Miracles coming. Save my family. Miracles coming. Can I get a witness? Shout it out. Shout it out. Yeah. Good God Almighty. I got to get out of here. But I want y'all to know that God made you a promise. And if I were you, I stand on this promise. Nevertheless, the foundation of the Lord standeth the sure that the Lord know them that are his. Tell your neighbor, say, do you know who you are? You're God's child. Do you know who you are? You're a king's kid. Raised up in a royal family. Do you know who you really are? A cattle on a thousand hills. He said it's mine. Do you know who you really know? The God of your salvation. The God that knows all things. When I'm here to tell you, the devil told you a lie. Yes, he did. Tell your neighbor, say, the devil been 
been lying all the time. Tell him again, he's been lying all the time. Yes, he had. He told you a lie when he said he wasn't going to get healed. He told you a lie when he said you wasn't going to have this. You wasn't going to have that. But if you look over your life, see everything that God brought you through and what you got right now. I wish I would get somebody in here that can rejoice for the stuff that's coming. Anybody see something coming? I dare you to put your hand over your eye and say, I see something coming. I can't see it too good, but I see something coming. I feel something coming. I smell something coming. I got a feeling something's coming. And what is this that make me love my enemies? What is this that make me love my friends? What is this that make me laugh when nobody behind me? What is this that make me run and I can't find nobody tracing me? God told me to tell you, whatever it is, it won't let you. It won't let you. It won't let you. Hold your peace. Have I got any movers in here? Have I got any chasers in here? Chase the devil right out of your life. Chase the devil right out of your home. Chase the devil away from your children. Tell your neighbor the devil been telling you lies. Now who you gonna listen to? The promises of the Lord. I yeah and amen. The devil told you a lie. He said you would die, but he's a lie. Cause I to go and commit suicide but I looked him in the face and say I can't die now my children gotta get saved I can't die now I got too much money to make I can't die now my business is thriving I can't die now I gotta go here give your neighbor a high five and tell him say hold on to your promise you can't die now children will never get that degree if you die now you won't have the money that you've been saving for if you die now you won't get healed if you die now you won't see your children make it through college tell somebody I and I'm going to hold on to it. Get your neighbor by the hand and act like you're holding on. Don't let their hand go. Say, I got to hold on. Tell them I got to hold on. Tell them I can't let go. I can't let go of you. Because if I let go of you, I may start to sink. If I let go of you, I may lose my anointing. If I let go of you, I may lose my ministry if I let go of you. I got some folk looking up to me, but God made me a promise, and I'm holding on to it, that in all thy ways, acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. He made me a promise. I got to hold on to it when I feel failure's coming. I got to hold on. that God gave me when I feel like I'm betrayed I gotta hold on to the promise cause the Bible says by this I know that thou favored me because my enemy does not triumph over me I gotta hold on to the promise he told me when it looks like I can't reach my goal I can't see my dreams he told me he'll make my feet like hinds feet and will make me walk upon high places when it feel like 
the whole world against me. If God be for me, he's more than the world against me. When it looks like I'm losing my faith, greater is he that is in me than he that's in the world. When it looks like I'm losing ground, I look to the hills from which coming my help, my help comes from the Lord. Tell your neighbor, say you gotta hold on, don't let go. Help is coming, help is on the way. Everybody look up to the hills, help is coming. Can I get a witness? Hold on, hold on, hold on. You may get light on, but hold on. They may set you up, but hold on. They may tear you down, but hold on. They'll kill your vision, but hold on. They'll snatch your ideas, but hold on. Assassinate your character, but hold on. Plot rumors, but hold on. Put your name up against a lot of mess, but hold on. For I am persuaded that neither life nor death nor any other creature will be able to separate me from the love, the love of God, who is this King of glory, the Lord, strong and mighty, the Lord in battle lift up your head be lifted up he said and I he said and I he said and I gonna draw on me unto you look at your neighbor and tell him say I know you've been through a lot I know you had a lot of struggles y'all won't talk to me but I know You've been through something. It's written all over your face. But thanks be to God, he beautifies the meek with salvation. And I found out that I got to wear good God Almighty. I got to wear my ministry like a loose garment. Sometimes you may not feel like praising God, but you got to make yourself praise him. Because when you think about where you could have been and where you're not, when I think of his goodness and all he's done, my soul, my soul, my soul cries out hallelujah. I got to get out of here. But before I leave you, I want y'all to know me and my sister, me and Karen had a little game that the little girls used to play a long time ago. Anybody ever been through something? Oh, y'all ain't been through nothing. Look at your neighbor and say, I've been through something. Yeah, I, I, there's, a, there's a little story, a little, little girl story that we used to play. And we used to come outside when we had time to come out. Cause Maddie wouldn't let us come outside. So we had time to go out. The time that we had to go out, I remember me and Karen were sitting and we were looking, trying to figure out what we gonna play. So I looked at Karen and I say, Karen, let's play Little Sally Walker sitting in a saucer. Where are my ladies at? What do we say? Cry, Sally. Wipe your weeping eyes. Put your hand. Well, let me tell y'all tonight, Church of God in Christ, those of y'all that's been in the church a long time, God told me to tell you that it's one of his promises that he don't want you to be burdened down. So anytime you feel like you can't make it through, you got to do this little thing. And I believe I got some sisters in here that understand that I have not seen some really good days.
days. I have not experienced so many bad days. But the one thing I know, and I gotta tell you, every now, every now and then, I begin to say this little thing to encourage myself. I said, Live. Sally woke up sitting in a saucer. Cry. Sally cry. Is it anybody in here that had some sleepless nights? Is it anybody in here that had some crying spells? Well, I'm here to tell you. Just said, rise. Sally rise. Wipe your weeping eyes. Put your hand on your hip and make your backbone slip. Tell your neighbor it's your time to rise. Sally, rise. Rise. Johnny, rise. Cause we been men do for a night. But joy, joy, joy. Anybody see joy showing up at your house? Anybody see joy showing up at your job? Anybody see joy? I dare you to open up your mouth and begin to give God praise so joy can come. Come on, open your mouth. Give him praise for what he's about to do. Give him praise for healing in your body. Give him praise for the doors he's about to open. Can I get a witness? Can I get a witness? Everybody get somebody by the hand. I don't know who I'm talking to in here, but it's some of y'all in here. The enemy been playing with your mind, but God told me to tell you that when you speak, the name of Jesus, demons tremble at the name of Jesus. And I dare everybody in here to open up your mouth. When I count to three, begin to call Jesus and watch things crumble. Begin to fall Jesus and watch God open doors. Begin to call Jesus and watch him save your children. One, two, three, come on y'all. Wait a minute. All I want you to do and just get your neighbor by the hand. And I want you to hold it up. I want you to hold him up. I want you to hold the hand up. And every time you begin to call Jesus, I want you to call your children's name. Call your spouse's name. Call your family member's name. And every time you call that name, God's getting their attention. If it's you tonight, when I call and I announce three times, all I want you to do is call their names and watch God work a miracle. And when you call their names, I want you to begin to shout, shout the victory, shout knowing that everything is going to be all right. Are y'all ready? Hold their hand up, hold their hand when I count to three, call their names. When you call their names, all I want you to do is shout the victory and begin to shout, knowing that God is already doing it. Are y'all ready? I said, are y'all ready? One, two, three. 